Ladies and gentlemen, in New Orleans, Louisiana, you're looking at the Tulane Stadium, actually the site of the Sugar Bowl Football Classic. 81,000 fans, a capacity crowd, are on hand here today on a slightly overcast afternoon, the sun trying to peek through. The temperature at the moment is 44 degrees. This is an ever-growing city, New Orleans, Louisiana, which nestles on a sweeping curve of the mighty Mississippi River. You see the new portion of the city with its very modern skyline, an area that includes over one million people. New Orleans at night has a lifestyle unique in these United States, as unique as the music that represents her. Many moods, the sometimes joyful, the sometimes sad, Dixieland jazz, a sprawling town covering some 200 square miles. The city is a blend of the new and the old, reflecting its heritage, which dates from the year 1718, when first founded as a French colony. This city came to the United States as a small part of a bargain package, sold by the Emperor Napoleon in 1803 as the Louisiana Purchase. Perhaps the most unique aspect of this city, or at least the best remembered by those who visit, is the historic French Quarter. The quarter harbors a vibrant style of life that blends yesterday with today and even tomorrow. The architecture is strictly yesterday, but the happenings are definitely now. Throngs of tourists and residents pack the French Quarter year-round, but particularly at times of holiday, Mardi Gras and now the New Year. The finest cuisine and, of course, Dixieland jazz, which was born here, is to be found in New Orleans French Quarter. The facets of the city are many, designed to delight and amaze. But after the night, life returns to normal in New Orleans. The heartbeat of the Mississippi Delta is a town like yours and mine. This is the Sugar Bowl. This goes to the victor of this 36th annual game here in New Orleans. Today, pitting third-ranked Arkansas, the Razorbacks from Fayetteville, Arkansas, against the Ole Miss Rebels from Oxford, Mississippi. Hello, I'm Chris Shankel, and for Bud Wilkinson and Bill Fleming, we say uh, a great decade ahead for all of you, and of course, a great 1970. And Charles, two uh, decades ago, uh, you were victorious with the Sooners here in the Sugar Bowl against LSU. Well, being here brings back many pleasant memories. Uh, a major bowl game is what every coach dreams about at the start of every season. I think it's what a football player dreams about all of his life. All of a sudden, you're here. And today, we've got two of the great teams in the country. Arkansas has averaged 33 points a game. Mississippi, approximately 30 points a game. They're great, great defensive teams, too. Arkansas leading the nation, allowing their opponents only 7.6 points per game. But Mississippi has held their opponents to only 14 points a game. So we've got explosive offense against sound defense. It's going to be quite a contest. And on the football field, Bud, we noticed that... Uh in this series that began in 1908, Arkansas, Mississippi, there's never been any love lost on the playing field at all. Well, the two states uh, border each other, and I think when you're that close and you have the strength and power and the tradition that both of these football teams have, when you have a chance to face each other in an afternoon, all of that pent-up emotion comes to the top. Bud, uh, Arkansas won the Sugar Bowl last year 16-2 to over Georgia. And Bill Montgomery, their quarterback, Chuck Dykus, was the most valuable player for Arkansas. They have had, just one year ago, bowl experience, major bowl experience. Does that give them uh, some advantage? Well, I think that uh, at the end of a season, when you're in a bowl game, uh, the momentum that you had in November is the key factor. Uh, Mississippi got off to a uh, somewhat disappointing start, but in November they came down the stretch like gangbusters, so they've got that real tide flowing for them. Arkansas, of course, lost that heartbreaker to Texas, the only loss on their record, 15 to 14 in a game that if you analyze it very carefully, you've got to say they should have won. Back again in our ABC telecasting booth. Bud, we um, have a pair of gifted quarterbacks here today. Well, they're a little more than gifted. They're both great, uh, both juniors. They have that indefinable quality of leadership and the ability to make the bad play a great play with their individual skills. Their statistics are extremely impressive. Both uh, Manning and Montgomery, and here they are. You can see that Montgomery's completed 53%, Manning 58%. Yards passing, well over 1,000 for both of them. Average per play, 7.7 .7 for Montgomery, 6.6 .6 for Manning. Montgomery hasn't thrown quite as many times. Uh, he's had seven interceptions, Manning nine. They're even on touchdowns. Uh, let's take a look at them in action, and it'll give you some idea of what we have coming up this afternoon. And both of the men have the ability to throw the ball so well on the run. 
And of course, when you can roll out with the option to pass run, you put the defense in a tremendous bind. This is the first play. They roll out by Montgomery, and he hits Reese, the wing back, for an Arkansas touchdown. Let's watch him roll left here. And while he's moving, he sets, turns quickly, and fires again. And hits Reese for the touchdown. Both teams will pass approximately half the time. There'll be some excitement coming up. Quick throw this time, and he hits Chuck Dykus. Dykus was the most valuable player in last year's Sugar Bowl game. 16 yards on that one. And this is beautiful execution of the screen pass. And it gives you some idea of the team blocking as well as the strength. This is Garber, alternate fullback, turning it on for 45 yards. Montgomery is uh, 6'1". Archie Manning is 6'3". Manning is, uh, I would say, the most dangerous man rolling out and then coming back to the opposite side. This is something, Chris, very few people can do. If he feels pressed, he reverses his field and then has the ability to get rid of the ball and throw it a remarkable distance. Let's take a look at him here. This is the type of play I was talking about. Rolling to the left, feeling the rush, being hemmed in and then swinging back all the way across the field to the opposite side and while on the run throwing the ball approximately 50 yards. Watch this thing. This is just unbelievable. And he hits Myers in perfect stride and that's got to be an unbelievable touchdown. And um, Archie uh, Manning, you'll see a lot of him today. That's the quick release. He's got all of the throws. He can arch the ball, he can drill it, he can get rid of it quickly. This next one is another example of the versatility. He's moving to his left, and while on the run, drills it very quickly to Poole, who's crossing over the middle for an Arkansas touchdown. These are the type of plays I think will be the key this afternoon. Both quarterbacks have the ability, when they're rushed, to scramble out of the pocket and convert a bad play into a good play, and the team that's the most successful in preventing that will probably be the winner. All right, let's meet the other folks that make these two quarterbacks great stars. The lineups, we go down to the Sugar Bowl field here at Tulane Stadium and our colleague, Bill Fleming. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we would like to introduce the starting lineups for today's 36th annual Sugar Bowl Classic. First of all, for the Razorbacks of the University of Arkansas, the offensive team. Split end, Garland, Texas, number 20, Chuck Dykus. Left tackle from Houston, Texas, number 78, Mike Kelson. Left guard from Lawton, Oklahoma, 74, Jerry Dossie. Center from Newport, Arkansas, 57, Rodney Brand. Right guard from Marshall, Texas, number 70, Ronnie Hammers. Right tackle, Bentleyville, Pennsylvania, 75, Bob Stankovich. Tight end from Little Rock, number 88, Pat Morrison. Tailback from Bentonville, Arkansas, number 33, Bill Burnett. Fullback from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, number 34, Bruce Maxwell. Flanker from Jonesboro, Arkansas, number 25, John Reese. Quarterback from Carrollton, Texas, number 10, Bill Montgomery, and the head coach, Frank Boyles. Good luck, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Today, Ole Miss will introduce its defensive team. At left end, from Aberdeen, Mississippi, number 47, Hap Farber. Left tackle from Yazoo City, Mississippi, number 70, Buzz Morrow. Middle guard from Philadelphia, number 41, Larry Thomas. Right tackle from Eupora, Mississippi, number 78, Claude Herrod. Right end from Aberdeen, Mississippi, number 48, Dennis Coleman. Linebacker from Macomb, Mississippi, number 46, Fred Brister. Linebacker from Decatur, Mississippi, number 40, Joe Blunt. Monster Man from Jackson, number 38, Bill Van Devener. Defensive halfback from Crystal Springs, Mississippi, number 28, Bob Knight. Defensive back from McGee, Mississippi, number 32, Whit Neely. Safety from Gulfport, number 36, Glenn Cannon. Offensive captain, fullback from Jackson, Mississippi, number 22, Bo Boa. And the head coach of Ole Miss, Johnny Vaughn. Good luck, coach. Those are the lineups. Now back to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Bill. The pregame activities have been concluded and we'll be back for the opening kickoff in just a moment.
Very warm gesture on the part of both coaches here at the Sugar Bowl. The seniors are coming out as representatives of the co-captains for Mississippi on the near side of the field. Number 36 is Glenn Cannon, and uh, number 22 is Bo Bowen, and behind him his senior teammates. While on the far side, we have number 24, Terry Stewart, 74, Jerry Dossey, Cliff Powell, 64, and number uh, 34, Bruce Maxwell. The referee is Charles W. Bowen, and let's listen. This is your bag judge, Mr. John Rain. This is your field judge, Mr. Horton Masetta. This is your electric clock operator, Mr. Morris Harrison. Your headliner, Mr. Bobby Gaston. Your umpire, Mr. Bruno Schrader. Arkansas, you've been designated as a visitor. Who's going to call this coin? You will? Step in here and take a look. This is an unusual coin. The side that has the bell, we're going to call head. We'll designate the side of the stadium as tails, right? This side is head, that side is tail. Call it while it's in the air. If I fail to catch it, I'll reflip, okay? You ready? He called tails. Captain, it is tails. You will defend a goal. All right. You may either kick or receive. You must defend that goal. Which you'll receive. Put your back to that goal. Put your back to that goal. Arkansas wins the toss. Elects to defend this goal. Ole Miss will re receive on this end. Good luck, Captain. Well, here at the Sugar Bowl, the 36th annual Arkansas winning the toss, electing to take the wind, which is blowing from left to right out of the north at about 15 miles an hour here at Tulane Stadium. And uh, they meet again in the Sugar Bowl. They last did in 1963 with Ole Miss winning the game, bud. Ole Miss will be operating this afternoon from two wide receivers. Franks will be split on one side, Myers on the other. The backfield will be in an eye or in a split set. They also will put both of their wide receivers to the same side in the slot set. Arkansas is a 4-3 defense, and here's the Mississippi season record. You can see that they lost a tough one to Kentucky. They lost another one-pointer to Alabama. Then they, looking at the last three games, you can see how strongly they came on, really, the last four games. Up the ball, and the referee, Charles W. Bowen, as we look at the offensive line, has spotted the ball at about the 19-yard line. A new ball being brought in now. It is actually placed at the 18, but the slot eye, this is Manning. Archie Manning, the junior quarterback from Drew, Mississippi, is brought down by Lynn Garner, number 53 of Fort Smith, Arkansas. And that's the play that Manning has used successfully all year, and he brings it out to the 23 five-yard gain, second and five. The Arkansas defensive pattern will become an odd defense as the line overshifts, and by adjusting the linebackers, they'll make it a wide tackle six on occasion. Along with number 84, Buddy Jones, Jim Poole is the tight end on third and three. Bo Bowen, senior fullback from Jackson, carried on the play, and it's an Ole Miss first down. Of Ole Miss, no score. And the Arkansas defense has stopped Archie Manning and the Rebels from Ole Miss. That was Cliff Fowle, the All-American, the linebacker, number 64. For the Razorback defense at the 31, a gain of two. It is fourth down and eight. And a rather dejected Archie Manning going to the sidelines. 12-25 <laughs> left in the first quarter. Arkansas with a fair catch. Has the ball for the first time. And Terry Stewart... Had trouble hanging on, and a marker is down on the field. He Remember, he signaled for a fair catch. Referee Charles W. Bowen in Arkansas. From the line of scrimmage, will move the ball at the Mississippi 45, and here is the signal. There's the Arkansas front wall. Split end Chuck Dykus. Watch him. Number 20, number 25, Reese. Also set away as a flanker. Bill Montgomery. And there's Bill Burnett. What a tailback he's been for Arkansas. Making the great block was the tight end, Pat Morrison, number 88, in the white jersey. Montgomery Burnett again. The marker is down near the line of scrimmage. Bill Burnett of Bentonville, Arkansas, a junior. Stopped by Buzz Morrow against Ole Miss. It's 
Dykus in the slot from the 34. And Bruce Maxwell. Maxwell, the senior fullback. The eye behind Montgomery. And a junior from Carrollton, Texas, Montgomery. You see that second effort getting him to the seven. We're dead 13 to go. First quarter. Maxwell blocking, Burnett carrying to only the five, bringing up a fourth down and two. Hap Farber, great defensive end, stop number 33. Hard, seven of nine this year, a sophomore. This one coming from the 13 plus 10 of the end zone, 23 yards up and... Oh, good. Rather high snap by All-American Rodney Brand. Time out here at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans where the score is Arkansas nothing, Mississippi nothing for the Rebels. Now Studdard is back here in the slot, number 81. No score. In motion is Reed. There he is. And he halfway breaks the tackle of Terry Stewart and falls across the 30. First down for Ole Miss and listen to the Rebels to the far side. Oh, there goes Bo Bowen. Bo Bowen. Bo Bowen on a 69-yarder. Let's take a look at it, and you can see the Arkansas defense is wide. They popped it. No linebackers were there. And he did a marvelous job downfield and also picked up some great downfield blocks. Ball ball at number 22, the senior, scoring his sixth touchdown. A timeout, the score here at the Sugar Bowl. Mississippi 7, Arkansas nothing. So now, with the ball at the 27, second and nine. Dykus double covered. So Montgomery had to take it with him. Dennis Coleman, 48. And rather than from the outside, as Arkansas has been playing. Maxwell, the fullback. So it's the day of the fullback here at the Sugar Bowl. Wick nearly made a touchdown saving tackle a little rise you can see the rush and when you're rushing linebackers and it's a running play called when they break past that line of scrimmage there's lots of room to run a 47 yard run Bill Montgomery and Burnett the tailback gets deeper now into Ole Miss territory Bruce Maxwell coming back with a 45 yarder for the Razorbacks and the Arkansas season's record, 9-1. Burnett finding uh, the middle of that Mississippi defense by Arkansas. A couple of minutes ago, Arkansas tried a 23-yarder, Bill McCard. Uh, have to go 32 yards. Gus Rusher holding up and no good. Bill McClard, number 19, consistent throughout the year, 0 for 2 today at 416 of the first quarter. Heat in motion. Manning. Two men out there. And there's Stuttered, number 81. Stuttered and Jones had flooded the zone. And what teamwork on their part, but a marker is down. It's Let's watch this again in slow motion. This is Stuttered breaking off from his wingback spot. Running the inside curl. Right with him, number 84, Jones. And this is a great catch. It's well defended. He simply takes the ball away. 
breaks the tackle breaks to the outside here picks up one block and watch him now as he goes out of bounds and is discussed to throw the ball personal foul back now from the 42 first and 25 Manning out there stuttered beautiful defensive play by junior Jerry Moore number 18 Jim Poole, one of the Ole Miss coaches, a boy this year that's done very, very well. 43 catches. I think as tough as anyone in football. Belts is split to the far side of the field. Reed now in motion. Manning. Garner put the rush on Manning and stuttered. At about the 37-yard line was hit again by Terry Stewart. Same as the last with Reed in motion. And Preston Faberner, number 83, who replaced Poole, gets it inside the 20. Stewart, number 18 in white, making the stop. And let's see where the official spots the ball. It's at about the 18-yard line. Watch it, it again for the first nice down. camera. You can see Carpenter on the rollout. And that extra yardage that he battled for. Frank, Tennessee, Georgia, and LSU. Stuttered to the far side. From the Arkansas 18. Archie Manning. Of the first quarter, Mississippi has scored two touchdowns in the last eight minutes. Coming into the game as an underdog against third-ranked Arkansas. Let's watch that touchdown again. This is some idea of this boy's running ability. Watch him just sift through here, breaking the tackles, and in a way, almost willowily breaking them. He doesn't do it with strength. He does it with skill and a kind of a weaving use of his hips and legs. A remarkable football player. ABC, Arkansas now. From its own 32, first down, Bill Montgomery. Mississippi interception coming in was number 42 Paul Dungo Dr. David Mullins Archie Manning now going left to right on third and eight start of the second quarter <laughs> a diving catch a penalty marker was thrown, as you saw a great deal of contact. Randy Reed, the sophomore. We know what this penalty is going to be when you wait that long to throw the ball. Usually some lineman may get downfield. I don't know if that's going to be it or not. <laughs> there it was, bud. You called it perfect. Ineligible receiver, and it's the fifth big penalty against Mississippi. Third and 23 for Ole Miss at the Arkansas 49, and the Rebels lead 14 to nothing. Manning. A five-yard loss, tacked on by Roger Harnish. World's leading skiers, two leading teams in the country. Arkansas with the ball now, their own 19 first down. Burnett. Tagging right along with him was Larry Thomas, number 41. But Burnett's determination brought him out to the 26-yard line, a gain of seven and second and three. Burnett now has gained 28 yards, seven carries. The left guard up front from Arkansas, Jerry Dossey, number 74. He's been blocking superbly. There's the line on second and three. Maxwell. Maxwell with an Arkansas first down. Out of bounds at the 39, and it was Dossie again. Second and 10 from the 39. Both men are out. There's Dykus. What a turn. Montgomery at midfield. And now the rushing offense combined with the passing of Arkansas coming in the front, bud. Pushed down at the Mississippi. 48. Matt Barber chases Montgomery. 
Montgomery's out of bounds near the 32. Averting a loss was Montgomery is Fred Brister, number 46. Double wing formation. And it appears that it worked. Bill Burnett worming his way. First down, Arkansas. Maxwell. Marker on the field. And what a short tackle by Glenn Cannon, number 36. At the 20 of Ole Miss. Was he inbounds? Yes, he was. At about the 12-yard line, the fullback, Bruce Maxwell. They needed only four. Great block by Maxwell, and Burnett is touchdown bound. The two setbacks combining beautifully, and Bill Burnett, number 33, 21 touchdowns. There he is. And let's watch it once more. This is a new move at the start. Watch how Montgomery reverse pivots. It's the first time that he's reverse pivoted this year and run that option play. It's a little bit slower. It lets the halfback get out. Watch Montgomery, and you'll see that he reverse pivots here. That reverse pivot delays him about three strides. It's a new play for this game. And now when he throws the pitch out to Maxwell, you can see how wide Maxwell is. He gets a great block. Pardon me, Burnett. Maxwell blocking for Burnett. And this is Burnett turning it on all the way into the end zone. And the slot. Read in motion. Stuttered. Stuttered May had enough for the first down. Burner on the tackle. Raleigh Myers now in the lineup. Number 86, the near side split in. Look at him get that ball away. Jim Poole, big sophomore. First down. Let's watch it again. This is something that Manning does better than anyone I've ever seen. He's pressured from the outside. He's hit as he throws the ball, and he completes the pass to Poole. <laughs> Jones and Mississippi gets near the Arkansas 35, make it inside the 30. Both university bands, you will see many members of the modern all-time All-America team. Okay, second and nine. Bowen proving that his balance is superb. And Bob, when it comes to playing football. So now, for the third down, and about six. Oh, what a catch. Buddy Jones, 19 yards, but hold the phone. Marker at the line of scrimmage. And you could see Manning check signals that time after Arkansas had jumped the defense. He called the perfect play. Seven remaining in the first half. The Rebel fans up in arms as the seventh penalty now being assessed against Ole Miss. An interference penalty against Ole Miss. Arkansas has had three of them already this afternoon. And it appears now with 91 on the field, this is Royce Hinton, that they may try a field goal. Hinton, the sophomore from Gloucester, Mississippi, is 5 of 12. Is Manning. There you get a good look at him without the helmet. He's upset. Can't quite believe it. He checked signals, made uh -huh. a perfect play, and they wind up fourth down trying to kick a field goal. Nearly 52 yards. Dead ahead with the wind to his back. Hinton. It appears long enough. Good. Fifty-two yards. It's 
the 36th annual Sugar Bowl for New Orleans with timeout. The score, Ole Miss 17, Arkansas 6. As they failed on two field goal attempts earlier in the game. Montgomery. Probably saw that flag drawn. Burnett carrying up to about the 30. Uh, one of the deep men is Feltz. The other is Bob Knight, number 28. Into the wind. Down by Arkansas. We'll call it the 44. In the lineup now. Feltz catches it. Gets blocking. Bruce James makes the tackle. Real fine blocking by Buddy Mitchell. 6'4", 230. And I believe that's the second time we've patted him on the back. Go, go, go. Nice avoiding run by Randy Reed, the sophomore of Ole Miss. Now from the 29 of Arkansas. Now we have Poole. Foot floppy. Manning. Poole is alone. But he goes to Stutter. Poole going deep. Stutter trailing him by 10 yards and Stutter gets another touchdown for Mississippi. So from the 20, it's Bill Montgomery. Brand is the center. This is the pullback. Maxwell may be enough for the first down. 30 to the near side. First down for Arkansas. Out to the 37, Maxwell. Uh, Montgomery. John Reese fielding the ball at the 48-yard line. An 11-yard gain and a first down as time has been called. Saw trailing. From the 48, first down. Montgomery. Tried to step into the pocket, but John Aldridge. Wendell out, number 72, and that Ole Miss jersey. Timeouts left, Arkansas 2, Ole Miss 1. Second down and 16. Montgomery to Maxwell. Maxwell to the Mississippi, 46. Thomas on the tackle. Not enough for the first down. It'll be a third down and four. 12, 34. Look at that rush. Long to Dykus. Touchdown. 54 yards. A tremendous rush by the Mississippi front four. And Arkansas now goes for two. It was intended for the tight end, Pat Morrison. And uh, I'd like to see that touchdown again, but. A couple of times, double slot set to the bottom of the screen. You can see Montgomery being rushed, rolling out. And as he's rolling, the defense moves laterally with him, enabling Dykus to get behind everyone into the end zone for the score. Let's take a look at Dykus in slow motion. You can see him breaking to the outside, down the field. And now he's floating as Montgomery moves to the outside, and he went past his halfback, and also he's past Neely. Montgomery, as he broke to the outside, saw him wide open, hit him with a perfect strike for the six points for Arkansas. Read in motion. And Poole comes back out to the 49. Let's see if it's enough for the first down. Bobby Field covering, and we have 10 seconds to go. First. Read in motion. Manning in motion. Look at that. A deflected pass intercepted by 63, Roger Harnish. But time appears on the clock has expired in the first half, and the players now will go to their respective dressing room. Goal position. 
And Bada just tells us what's going to happen in the second half. Another <laughs> thrilling game. As you see, we have 36 points on the scoreboard already here in the Sugar Bowl. And what a great halftime of entertainment coming up. And now back to the statistics. First downs very close. Offensive plays and numbers very close. But Mississippi leading the Rebels having 310 total yards against 256 for Arkansas. One interception for each team. The vitally important statistic is time of possession with two brilliant offensive teams who has the ball the longest period of time has got to be in charge and Mississippi held the ball for 17 minutes and 5 seconds of the first half. Arkansas had it only 12.55 and 7. The offensive line ranks Mitchell Coker so on down the line Old Miss in the dark jersey their colors being Cardinal red and navy blue from 16 Montgomery the quarterback and there goes yard producing Bill Burnett. Maybe no game, second and ten. For Arkansas up front, these men that you see supered on your television screen. Rodney Brand anchoring the line. All a play for Arkansas, turning 24 to 12 here in the third quarter. Montgomery. Maxwell the fullback. Couldn't pull it out of the air. There was good double coverage in the center, led by Glenn Cannon and Bill Van Devender. And it felt one of the potential uh, receivers for Ole Miss. And the ball that gets it is Bobby Knight. And Knight's return has Mississippi near the Arkansas. 43, first down. 81 Stoddard toward us. Manning toward the goal line. Archie Manning tackled by Jerry Moore. From the 40, he moved the ball inside practically the 10. The pass called, and that's the fifth time that he has escaped, breaking the pattern of the play. To Take a look at it again. Watch him roll to the bottom of the screen, getting ready to throw it. Then that daylight opens up for him, and watch him make that open field move. Read in motion. <laughs> 53 is senior Lynn Garner from Fort Smith, Arkansas, making that big tackle back at the 20, and it brings up a fourth down yards. Jimmy Wallace holding. Up. Good. As the 100th year of college football comes to an end, we're witnessing one of the year's great postseason football games, the Sugar Bowl from New Orleans, Louisiana. Great tribute to the Ole Miss offense. Dykus and Reese going out. And in the middle is the fullback, Maxwell. Maxwell with a big first down for the Razorbacks at the 39. Joe Blount on the tackle. 36 yarder plus the touchdowns as Reese of Arkansas is to the near side. Good count. Montgomery again to Maxwell. Maxwell to the Mississippi 25. Powering his way to about the 17. And that's the third time Montgomery has gotten away from the contain. And a pocket pass, starts to run, then breaks to the outside, sees Maxwell open, and he was wide open, and Maxwell runs this one like a fullback should. When he's cornered, just put that head down and take five more yards. And Maxwell, unfortunately, shaken up on that play. This with a first down, and with 6.38 remaining in the third quarter, Maxwell carried the ball six times today for 96 yards. Plus his five catches and 81 yards. Inside. Arkansas, second and six at the Old Miss, 13. Bill Burnett thrown for a loss. Back to the 21 by Bill Van Devener. Got it. Since there we do have a personal foul, a face mask violation. That's the ninth penalty against Ole Miss. He goes to the left side as a tight end. Dykus is flanked to the near side. Third down. And there's your first down. 
Bill Burnett and 47 with the tenacity of a fine player, Hap Farber. Ian Burnett. The director today, Andy Sedaris. Wish you all a happy, happy New Year. Montgomery. It's all line, and they'll have to go wide or go to the air. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. And the Mississippi defense. Six foot three inch Claude Harrod and Buzz Morrow. 78 and 47. Half Barber. A 34 yarder with the 10 yards in the end zone. It's up. This one is good. Bill McClard of Arkansas. It's the 36th annual Sugar Bowl from New Orleans, Louisiana. With 3.16 to go in the third quarter, we have a timeout, and the score is Mississippi 27, Arkansas 15. Another of his brilliant days. He has raced for one touchdown of 18 yards. He threw a 20-yard uh, touchdown pass to Vernon Studdard, the junior quarterback. Montgomery spotted Reese, but Reese was out of bounds. Good defensive play know, Chris, by Bobby uh, Knight. Or was he? Fine 20-yard play instead. 10 of 19 for Montgomery passing. From the 40 now, first down, Montgomery. Great protection. This one to Maxwell. There's another 10 yards. About 13 yards by Maxwell. Buzz Morrow, number 7. It is Reese, John Reese, number 25, the flanker. There's Dykus. Look at him scramble. First down at the Ole Miss 12. Dykus, this is the first time that the two wide men have been split on opposite sides. Dykus was at the bottom of the field, the left side of the formation, little outside fake, breaking across the middle. Montgomery delivering the ball perfectly. And this is what I say is, means wanting the extra yardage. Look at those moves. And then watch him turn on that speed. Place Reese, but could Second and eight from the 11, Arkansas. Maxwell, the option. And Glenn Cannon, number 36, one-handed, an end zone interception. Bruce Maxwell throwing on an option intended for Reese and Glenn Cannon. Part of this great city. Third down and 12. And there's an interception. That's Dennis Berner of Arkansas. A big play bringing it back to the 10. And it's a third down and five. Montgomery, and there is Maxwell, touchdown. And the senior, the only one in the Arkansas backfield who's having a great day, came up with a resourceful play. Montgomery as he delivers the ball, it's a rollout pass to avoid the rush down the middle. Montgomery moving to his right, there's Farmer hitting him just as he delivers the ball, but it's good, and Arkansas is back within striking distance. Here at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana, the score, Mississippi 27, Arkansas 22. Down to 10. And a fine catch by Jim Poole, number 89, coverage by number 49, Bobby Field. Less than a yard, many. Oh, Bowen. It's the first down for the Rebels. 19 for Ole Miss. 18 for Arkansas. Your side. Study the slot. Read in motion. And Manning goes to his tight end again. Jim Poole. As the motion man goes, the end drops off with him. And the two men outside, Poole is open inside. Of our 
Arkansas. There is Bo Bowen, who scored the first touchdown, getting close to the 45 of the Razorbacks. Bobby Field in on the tackle. So it's a third down and five for the Rebels of Ole Miss at the 43-yard line. Manning rifled one to Stuttered, and that brings up a fourth down now. The University of Mississippi. Three of Arkansas, Fagan to punt for the Rebels. 6.56 to go in the game. It's off the side of his foot. Nevertheless, a fine punt. What a defensive weapon. 40 yards with that forward bounce. And there you see the time left, 27, 22. And with time out to score, Ole Miss is in the lead over Arkansas, 27 to 22. So we have a third down and eight now. Montgomery back in his own end zone again. Three receivers out. It's a strike to Chuck Dacus. Dacus up to the 30, the 40. Out of bounds at about midfield. Let's watch it again in slow motion. This is Dacus. Montgomery standing very coolly in the end zone while Dacus runs the crossing pattern. You can see Morrison going deep to take the safety man back. Dacus using that speed. Mississippi 48 first down. Montgomery being pressured. And rushing in hard and making a shoot top tackle. Brister and Claude Herard. Reese 25 to the near side. 5.14 to go. Looks one out on the screen to the fullback Maxwell. Maxwell at the 50 to 45. And he departs from the field at about the 37. Beautiful. Glenn Cannon again, forcing him out of bounds. Beautiful reading again by Montgomery. The linebackers rushed again. North against the south, and Arkansas going in a northerly direction here in the south has a first down. Frank Broyles. Let's watch the play again in slow motion. This is Reese. Reese is the wide receiver. The pass is going to be thrown to Maxwell. And this is what makes the football team, of course, your receivers running their patterns. Reese breaking to the inside, looking back, seeing that the ball has been thrown to Maxwell, the delay man, and then turning immediately into a great blocker. Montgomery floating one out to Maxwell again, just long. Montgomery has 203 yards passing in this half. Second and 10 from the 38 of Mississippi. In the pocket, down the middle. Dacus has a tremendous collision with Cannon. This is why football is called a contact game. Dacus breaking to the outside. The ball is thrown. He keeps his eye on it very well, but so does Glenn Cannon. Watch this collision. Both men driving for the ball. 38. And do you rush or cover? That's the decision. All right. Protection and down the middle of the pass. It was complete. But no, the official ruled he did not have possession. Dykus, and let's see if Reese. Also from the outside, see him hit right there as the ball hits Dykus. He can't quite hold it. It pops loose. He didn't ever have control of it. Incomplete pass. Now, or when well, you're going to get one more shot if the defense can hold up, Chris. It's been a real battle because they started at about their own three following a Fagan punt. Here's Montgomery, the Texan. Throwing and Matt Morrison couldn't hang on to it. And that drive dies. Glenn Cannon over to cover, along with Neely and Van Devender. And the pass is to the tight end, Jim Poole, number 89. Chris, normally you used to feel in football that when you have a five point lead and approximately four and a half minutes left that you keep the ball on the ground and try to grind it out. But with a player like Manning, the best thing you can do is have him with the ball moving wide. First and 10 now. And the 48. And Manning has Lynn Garner all over him. Number 53, the senior from Fort Smith. 2.54 left in the game. Mississippi with the ball. They lead by five. And it's Leon Feltz 
That catches us. Let's see where his forward progress was. Hit quickly by Jerry Moore, number 18. And it looks like it's out to the 45. That's 11 yards, bringing up a fourth down and 13, bud. We have to congratulate you and his staff. And here's Montgomery now. Maxwell. And a sure tackle thrown on Maxwell at the 29-yard line by Fred Brister, the monster man. He's come to this side of the field. Montgomery. Montgomery from Carrollton, Texas, comes out to the 41-yard line. It's a first down for the Razorbacks with a minute and 45 to go in the game. And here are the Razorbacks from their own 41. Intended for Burnett. And there's Cannon, the All-American. Bikers and Reese to the near side. Four receivers out. Montgomery gets away. Looks. is beyond the line of scrimmage. Keeps going. Montgomery comes to the Mississippi 40 on a 19-yard carry. A first down with a minute 26 to go in the game. Meaning, Arkansas needs six points to go ahead. Montgomery. A strike. The Dykes. Loose ball. And Glenn Cannon, number 36, covered the Dykes fumble. And we have a minute and eight seconds left in the Sugar Bowl. Ole Miss maintaining a five-point lead, 27 to 22. Part of football. Dykes driving down the field, faking to the inside, turning on the hook, getting a great throw from Montgomery, and then as he fights for extra yardage, being hit, the ball pops away as Cannon hits him, and Cannon completes the job by recovering the fumble himself. That's Jim Bell, Sports Information Director of uh, Arkansas with him. What a thriller this has been. Mississippi jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead after the first quarter, led 24 to 12 at halftime. At the end of the third, 27 to 15. Back unofficially, 16 seconds to go. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Today's Sugar Bowl is produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, technical director Vern Hendrickson, associate engineering supervisor Roy Robbins, unit manager Frank Holub, assistants to the producer Mike McCallum, Terry Jaspro, and Bill Yarrick. Also at our spotter Bill Creel and our statistician Jerry Capstein, we have seen a thrilling Sugar Bowl classic. And we're anxious to see what player will be given the Miller Digby Trophy, which is symbolic of the most valuable player. Once again, the final score at the Sugar Bowl here in New Orleans, Louisiana, is Mississippi the underdog, 27. Arkansas, the favored, 22. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 